Hi, and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. In today's episode, we will talk about ABEC, which technically is under public preview. However, it's already enabled in most regions, should you want to use this feature already now. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. We are going to look at two ways of authorizing access to resources in Azure. We have RBAC, which is role-based access controlled, and ABEC, attributes-based access control. We will do a quick review of RBAC and then dive into ABEC to see how these technologies play together. In Azure, we have security principles, roles, scopes, and role assignments. The security principle, this is an object that represents a user, group, service principle, or managed identity, which requires access to an Azure resource. Then we have roles, which are a collection of permissions, such as read, write, or delete. Azure has several built-in roles, and the most common ones are owner, contributor, and reader. Owners, they are the admins. They have full rights to manage the resource and the ability to assign roles, permissions, on resources themselves. Contributors, they basically have the same rights as owners, except they are not able to assign roles on resources. Then we have readers. As the name states, these are just able to read the resources. You can also create custom roles with a set of permissions that you define yourself. So as you can see, there are many possibilities with regards to permissions and roles within Azure. In addition to the mentioned roles, there are also resource-specific ones. For example, the role Storage Blob Data Reader this is specifically for storage accounts in Azure. Having this role allows you to read and list Azure storage containers and blobs. Where do roles have permissions? Well, that's where the scope comes into play. In Azure, you can define the scope on four different levels. You have them on management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and resources. Role assignment, that means that you attach a role to a security principle. This way, you can, for example, grant a group access to manage an entire subscription or just a resource in a resource group. This is how you can go about to apply R back in Azure. Let's assume a group of Azure administrator need to manage the cloud environment. First, we decide on the scope. We will use, in this example, the subscription. That will be our scope. Then you have to think about which role do they need. Since they are admins, we will give them owner rights. Third, who needs this access? Well, let's give it to a security group where all the admins are in. That's basically the principle of RBAC. Much like the Hulk, it's very powerful, but leaves some things to be desired. And that's where ABEC, also known as Attribute-Based Access Control, comes into play. It's not a new superhero which comes to defeat the RBEC Hulk, but more complementary, like Betty Ross. ABEC's power is easily explained by an example, so let's dive into one. Here's a mighty file server with hundreds of folders. Whenever a new project starts for a company, a new folder on the server is created just for that specific project. We have projects running for Project Rain, Project Snow, and of course, Lightning. These folders are then stamped with metadata, as in tags. So, for example, the Snow folder is stamped with Project equals Snow, and the other folders are also tagged accordingly. Your new employee, let's call him Patrick, he needs to work on the project and he wants access to the Lightning folders. You just assign him a role which has access to all the folders with the tag project equals Lightning. He will then be able to access all the folders stamped with this specific tag. Other folders he will not be able to access. So, you might ask yourself, how does this actually work in Azure in practice? 
The feature is currently in preview for Azure Blob Storage, but let's jump into the demo to see how it looks like. We have a storage account created, Storage APAC. Let's open it up. We will create a container called All Projects with a public access level of private. First thing we need to do is check that the authentication method is set to Azure AD User Account and not to Access Key. And we will upload two files. The first file we upload is called Project Blue. Under Advanced, we find the interesting parts. We have something called Blob index tag. That's where we specify the key values for ABAC authentication. In the key field here, we enter project. The value field will be entered as blue. And with this field filled out, we click on upload. First file is uploaded, so let's upload another file for another project. Upload here, we select the file project green. Under advanced, we do the same thing, but we assign different tags. So we assign the index tag another value. So we take project and green, and we upload this file. Let's say you want to assign users access to all files that are used for project blue. You click here on the IAM section and add role assignment. Here we will look for storage data reader. We select it, click on Next. Here we select the members to add. So we'll just add a user that should have access to Project Blue. User has been added, we click on Next. And here we will actually use ABAC. We click on Add Role Assignment Condition. First, we need to select an action that the users are allowed to do. Since we're using the role Storage Blob Data Reader, we only have the option to add reader access. Next up, we need to define the expressions. So we click here, Add Expression. Here we have a couple of options, and it can get complicated if you want to invoke custom code. For this demo, we will stick to the basics. We select an attribute source, which is the source type for the attribute we want to check. This is a resource. Next, we get to pick the attribute itself. So we can select from several different options, such as account name, tags, path, and container name. We will then check for blob index tags values in key. The key is the key we defined while uploading the file project and operator string equals. Since this is for project blue, the value is then blue. We click on save, and here we get to review the code. We review and assign, and now we added the assignment. If you upload new files with a blob index tag of project blue, then all the users you have assigned will automatically be able to read the data. They will not be able to access the files with the project tag green. If we click on IAM, we see the details. Under the role assignment here, we click on that one, we can scroll further down and we see the storage blob data reader role. We can click on view and edit, and here we can see the individual expressions and accesses. Let's summarize our learning experience. ABAC currently only works for Azure Blob Storage accounts. Also, you can use it with the following built-in roles. Storage Blob Data Contributor, Storage Blob Data Owner, and Storage Blob Data Reader. These are the storage attributes which you can use in your condition. You can use a container name, blob path, blob index tags keys, and blob index tags. Some of the benefits of APAC, it provides a more fine-grained access control. You can grant a user access to only a specific set of files with certain tags as we have seen in the previous examples. It also helps to reduce the number of role assignments. Each Azure subscription supports a maximum of 2,000 role assignments. Certain scenarios may force you towards this limit. This will be mitigated and can be solved by ABAC. In practice, I still have not seen anyone in the real world getting close to this. 
but it's one thing that has to be considered. Use attributes that have specific business meaning. So, it's easier to manage access when attributes have real meaning to the business. Think about the example we had with the project names, but you can also use software development stages and even classification levels. Thank you for watching this exciting episode about RBAC and ABAC in Azure. Key takeaway from this is that ABAC is in public preview, but it's there to be used. Until next time, take care.